And welcome back, everyone, to the EU SCC closed qualifiers here. We are about to qualify one more team, Mifflin, to the well, three SCC more, right? there in Europe. Well, right now we're going to do one more. Uh, I was getting and ahead then of myself. I think technically five more overarching because we've only qualified one. You're just going to be more right than me? Is that your I'm shtick? core. That's Mifflin. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just more right. And look, and what, it's my favorite Futurama quote technically correct which is the best kind of correct i've actually said that twice today to one of our video editors who yeah. will not give it to me he won't let me be technically correct oh. even though i am well to be fair the the reference is like for bureaucracy in that episode which is not like we, we yeah they're robots yeah we don't like like just file pushing anyway we've got some really good fun things ahead of ourselves I completely lost that sentence in the middle. Of it. Here's Europe. There's a whole lot of Europe that still has to be going on. Of course, we're going to be seeing Just Us 6 later this week. Unfortunate for them that they just took that loss. But they're not out just yet, so we can see if they will still qualify. Three more teams from just today will be qualifying, and that is what we're looking at. This qualifier round, Team Copyright and Ogie Bogies are up next, but then Belt Slap, Thunderhead, Winter Frogs, and Late to Scrims are all going to go on against each other later. And then we're going to cover a lot of that lower bracket tomorrow to figure out the last couple of teams joining the European SCC. Remember, it's only six teams that are going. So we get the four from today, which means only two tomorrow out of the eight that we're going to be watching are going to be able to make it there. So there's a lot of pressure once you get knocked down out of this round. But now, Mifflin, we're looking at a team, admittedly in Team Copyright, that has a lot of familiar names, and a lot of them that have been not just in the SCC really successfully, one of them has literally made it to World's Finals. Ice Ice is on this team. Team Copyright looks like it is going to be one that, that is, is difficult to beat. Yeah, top to bottom, you got B. Azrael, Ice Ice, Gunter, Okeanos, and Streak Up. And if you've been following the European <laughs> SEC or Smite Competitive History in general, <laughs> you're pretty familiar with a lot of these names. This is a squad that has a lot of history behind them and has not struggled at all so far in this tournament. Has not dropped an individual game, but that could be true of literally everybody that yeah. we're going to watch for the rest of the day. So there's some joy there. And that someone who has not tasted defeat will have to, you know, internalize that that stifling heavy loss onto their souls that you know just leaves a permanent black mark you played what does defeat taste like like if you could equate it to a food um i would say it tastes like iron but specifically when you cough up blood <laughs> that, that is painfully specific I, my brain <laughs> i asked you for taste and my brain went to the smell of durian uh, because Bro, durian what durian in food tastes great but eh, that's i don't know about great well okay taste Fine. Yeah, it's Either edible. way, uh, like you said, this is a team that, that you should know at this point. They've, they've been very successful. Azrael's maybe the, the least known in my eyes, like maybe the least competitive, uh, at least experienced out of all of them from what we've seen in the past. But realistically, every single person on this team has had some claim to fame. Ice Ice maybe the most just because of what we've seen out of them in the jungle. But even what we saw last week, I mean, this is just a very controlling team. Yeah, top to bottom, aggression from minute zero. I think the, the stigma around EU SEC of being this slow, methodical region where it's always about that 30-minute mark gameplay, five-on-five -five engagements, doesn't exactly ring as true as it once did. Now there are a lot of teams here that are kind of shifting up the style, adapting to what we've seen from the SPL play-ins. And I think maybe the SPL play-ins is a good conversation point yeah. around Europe as a whole because... They came over, they adapted to the meta, and they brought it back home, and it's starting to have a ripple effect through the rest of the region. It's been fun to watch just because, uh, I mean, seeing how the region gets shaken up. It was always interesting to see, you know, way, way back when, when the two styles were so vastly different. Yeah, there was Watching a, there was a how they collide, shift. but, like, almost every time, I mean, just like what you said, after a LAN, somebody came back with something new. Whether it was NA or Europe, I think it changed every single land. But someone learned something. The other side, what they're going to be going up against here is Ogie Bogies. Again, another team. A couple of familiar names on this one, but a team that found a 2-0 last week, Mifflins. You mentioned that. And they have a lot of promise here, but I think this is going to be... I mean, as every matchup, as you go in a bracket, their hardest one yet. And we'll see what they're going to be able to bring. Christopher Robin looked really solid. Obviously, Fantomu on this team is someone who we got to see quite a bit last year. It's going to be a fun one to see. Yeah, a lot less name recognition, top to bottom. This is Ogie Bogies, starting off with Ogabri, Fantomu, Hedgehog, Jockin, and Christopher Robin. Jockin and Fantomu are the two names that stand up to me that yeah. I've, I've seen a fair bit in the past. Otherwise, a lot of untested talent here. And... There's a certain strength to that. There is a certain strength of being the team that people have less expectations for, or less weight on your shoulders, knowing that you could still drop down to that loser's bracket and get an additional chance to chase that SCC dream as well. Has got to weigh well for them. If they do win here, everybody's popping off. All of a sudden, the entirety of the power rankings takes a shift up in European SCC. So 
being the underdog, not necessarily a, a bad situation to find yourself in, but I think it is a, a fair analysis of yeah. this squad. The, this is not the expected 50-50. I think we're going to do bookie <laughs> odds. God, I love bookie <laughs> odds. I'd probably have to go like 7-3 copyright. Yeah, I, and realistically, I think it's something that you have to look at. at their, again, just the name recognition on one side. That's where I'm at. Literal competitive history. Ice Ice has been in Worlds Finals. Fun fact, he's also the most first-blooded, I think tied for the most first-blooded in Worlds Finals. I, <laughs> look, if I did a spreadsheet where I have that stuff, I'm going to use it, okay? I, I watched every Worlds Finals to get those, and I'm going to keep that in my back pocket. But I will say that Ogie Bogies last week, what was, it was Zinedine, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, and I feel really bad about it. ZZ, that team ZZ. they beat, they had a lot of good names on there. So I have a lot of expectations for them to be able to perform here. And, and maybe it's not going to be the cleanest. Maybe they're going to have to slog through it. I mean, even in some of the highlights, Mifflin, they did not quite have the full lead, but we'll see if they can do it right here, right now, as we get to picks and bans for game number one between these two teams. It is going to be copyright who is first pick here. And we've been seeing a lot of this, like Bastet first pick comes to my mind because I think we saw her the most during like the play-ins, things like that. But the Finrears, your Matarasus, because we saw Azrael with a big highlight on that. There's a lot of, of really flexible first picks right now. Yeah, and you know, I, I've been kind of considering why are we seeing Bastet so often make her way through the first phase of bands, especially considering the priority that we saw from these SPL teams, from the Oni Warriors, from the SPL play-ins. Yeah. It was either banned out first every single time or immediately getting snap locked first. Occasionally we'll see her drop down to like second pick, maybe even around that third pick. I think once or twice we've even seen her go all the way down to the second phase of picks. And if I had to guess why, it at these <laughs> at this level of play, why we're seeing Bastet work her way through, it's because she's got a very, very high skill floor for competitive play. Yes. There is a clear distinction, especially in the jungle, between ranked, casual, and competitive play. In ranked, as long as you're landing your abilities, you're feeling just fine. In casuals, even more so. But in competitive, Bastet has a very unique play style in which she has to play the sides of these team fights. She has to very well place her ultimates. That leap is an incredible double-edged yeah. sword because you know exactly where she's going to go back to or she's committing one of her escapes to high damage output. And that makes it very hard to perform. So I think a lot of these teams are just kind of heat checking saying, do you have a Bastet? Because you're going to lock it in. She's incredibly strong. She she is the meta right now. So you're going to lock it. But if you can't play it, you just get dominated. Look we'll see whether or not. I mean, look, if I'm going to give the players on copyright to be able to pick up a god and make it look good, yeah, I assume that it's going to be the Bastet. It's Finrir and Medusa. Again, two really, really high priority picks. I want to mention this just because it's going to get locked in right there. I was trying to call it before it happened. It was Azrael specifically. They ban out the Bologna. It feels like this Amaterasu is something that they've been going to. And we can talk about that solo lane matchup, but this Finrir is another big talking point. Bastet, she gets locked in. I think nine times out of ten lately we've been seeing her go solo. Maybe ten times out of ten. I'm actually not sure. I've seen a jungle Bastet competitively in the last few weeks. This Finrir... It's a little bit of a different story. We've seen him go solo, I think not just when Fine OK plays it, but I believe in the SBL play-ins. We've seen him go jungle. We've seen him go into support. How do you think? Is he, does he fit well with Medusa, or is he better over there in the jungle here? I love her with Medusa. If I'm picking anything with Medusa, it's something that can match the level of aggression that Medusa brings and have similar levels of mobility. Fenrir does both of those things. If the, the entire strategy is, I'm going to lacerate in aggressively, Ragnarok, that sets up for it. Unchain the, the jump stun, that sets up for it. You've got similar levels of DPS. You've got phenomenal scaling, thanks to Seething Howl, with these supports going towards just raw, dedicated defense items. You're still getting that additional power from your kit. I love this lane. It is one of the highest kill pressure lanes you can get in Smite. Now, man, I want to ask you about Bacchus, because we haven't seen him. Maybe we'll see him in the bands, and I, I can bring it up then. Uh, you know, Ho Yi, who cares? Oh, yeah, he was bad last year. I mean, there we go. I, I There's care. the bit, right? Well, okay, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, well, Gunner got locked in, dude. He's <laughs> on the other side. There's, there's something that I think more important, at least in my eyes, on this board. Oh, why? <laughs> why Yorm? Look, man. <laughs> Question mark? Gonder <laughs> is not as bad as people are making it out to be, right? Sure, he's not that, that cream of the crop, top of the meta soul lane pick. He does have some flex potential. Yeah. We've seen it in the European SEC sometimes go towards mid. Generally, we see it in the soul lane. I'm expecting soul lane. I'm projecting soul lane here. So what does Jormungandr bring to your team? I think Jormungandr has some of the best totem of coup control. Mm -hmm. Thanks to that gilded arrow start. His auto attacks are incredibly strong. He gets great lane pressure. He's nearly impossible to gank. 
That's been the story for as long as Jormungandr has been on the edge of the meta, back when Ducky was locking it in. Literally every game back in Season <laughs> 7, we'd make fun of him for it. What is this the god of? Not dying. That's still true. But since then, in the last couple of years, his damage output has actually gone a lot higher. He's got decent setup for his team. I think Jormungandr is actually just one legitimate buff away from being one of those top meta picks. Well, we'll see. I mean, right here, right now, they could at least prove how well he could be just in the right hands. Olorun gets locked in alongside those top three there for Ogie Bogies. And that kind of throws a wrench in my plan because, I, you know, and I see this. Originally, I assume Fenrir Medusa lane. I see Olorun. I mean, we've seen both Olorun and Medusa oh, mid. Now we get a you. Nemesis. So that's, that's probably jungle. jungle, right? Like, jungle. So it's really just the Medusa and the Oleron right now that can swap. But I feel like Medusa mid has been more likely over the last few months than Oleron. It has also, been. Also, who ran that? Was it like Twig? Yeah, I think it was Twig. He, he, he played some uh, a fair bit. Yeah. But look, you got to evaluate lane matchups, right? When you okay. have the ability to flex your lanes, you got to think to yourself, where is uh, our, our highest likelihood of, of hitting the ground running? Where is our highest likelihood of hitting pay dirt with these gods? Fenrir Medusa lane, incredibly high kill pressure, but up against a Ho Yi, who's got a traditional leap, might be a little bit harder. He's got a pretty decent self peel with the stun to stop Brutalize. But Medusa into Morgan Le Fay, similarly hard to execute on because Dragonflight's unreactable CC. I got to say it. You can't stop me, Ajax. <laughs> you know what? You got to say it. And as far as I know, Ajax isn't in here to stop you. Yeah, okay. So we're good. <laughs> I had to look around just to make sure. Uh, it's going to be, of course, me, Myth. And Doug, one more time through this set. Copyright going up for a relatively standard. Now, we've seen, and I want to ask you about this, mostly in North America, this kind of like 2-1-2 origin at the very beginning, whether whether it happens with the, the jungle buffs themselves or if it just ends up happening in lane. Do you have a start that you prefer? Uh, I think that the starts are a little bit more adaptable now in Season 9 because of what they each do for you. So the start that we're seeing between both of these junglers now is likely going to be start speed buff with your mid laner, walk over to red, go mid, or flex it over and go for an early duo lane gank. What does this start establish you? It gives you mid pressure, which should help you control early mid camp rotations or give you the potential to fight over invading back camps on the other side. Or you could go for the 2-1-2 matchup, have your soul laner and jungler kind of Voltron up in the, in the soul lane. And what does that afford you? Soul lane pressure, control blue buff rotations, but it leaves the duo lane on an island. I don't think you want to leave this duo lane on an island when Olorun's already <laughs> getting off to this kind of start. So yeah. I like the starts we're seeing from these junglers. I think that is frightening. And, you know, again, I look at Olorun, I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't expect anywhere near that amount of damage <laughs> coming out of him this time around. So that is a really good start for them. Streak up should be able to, to sustain throughout all, all that. And, of course, we have to talk about the aggression. We talked about the Finrir earlier. We talk about what the junglers could bring there on the other side of the map right now. So really, I think it is support versus support. Olorun doesn't get away from Sobek too, too easily. I mean, he's got what his shield, I think, that technically heals and does a small knockback. But he doesn't have a lot to, to get out of there if Sobek does try to lock him down. No, he's got beats, and and that's just <laughs> about it. Now you got to hope that once you take over to level 5, Sobek has to be incredibly choosy with his plucks. I think Olorun has a unique matchup in that something I Raffer said about two years ago that I have not stopped quoting because I, I, I love hearing it. If you are Sobek in the late game and you land pluck on a carry with beads, you are just going to die. If you are Sobek at level 5, laning against a level 5 Olorun, and you pluck him and he's got beads, your time's dilated. You're probably just going to die. Like yeah, it doesn't work out too well, Hoagie of Ogie Bogies is in a little bit of trouble here. Wow, a lot of damage. <laughs> it feels like out of nowhere, but it is the Bastet in the jungle, notably. I'd said that I don't think I'd seen that. Ice Ice piloting it, gets the first blood, and sets up Asriel for a really solid kill. Puts back this Jormungandr. And Jorm's gone for the Tainted Steel start myth. And there's, I mean, I guess like Ama has some healing, but not the traditional start that, that I would have expected, but I don't know if there's a lot of other options for him. I, I was kind of projecting for the Gilded Arrow to try and match some of that pressure, but considering Amaterasu is a very strong Death Toll user, also has some self-sustain in the kit, maybe Tainted Steel, going to help you out with that poke in the laning phase, but even then, I just feel like Gilded Arrow would have given you so much more pressure. There's a pluck, but the beads are right there. We'll see if Okeanos dies or if the kill goes the other way. Streak up, jumps in, good knock up, gets the damage, and now is trying to run away. Okeanos does die for that, though. 
So they go one for one. Carry for support. Streak up still running away. Jockin is sitting on Whoa. top of him. Really good ricochet. Gets some good damage out there. And the stun ends up not connecting up into the air. Jump over the wall for streak up. And that gets just enough space between them. And now Ice Ice. Yeah, he's joined the fray. Have to be a little more frightened of this fight. So Oogie Bogies pull one back, but they lose Christopher up. Yeah, Ice Ice actually, despite getting first blood for himself, still about a level down on Phantomu in the jungle. I was expecting... Yeah, just ultimate over the wall, man's going to have a ranged Fenrir ult, right? But that's not the case this time around, and Ice Ice will eventually take over to level 5 after confirming his own purple buff, and well, he's rotating in immediately. Yeah, good damage. There's that ult coming online, and hey, you used your beads? That is going to be a free pickup. Ice Ice credit for the kill. Okeanos walks back in. And so Mifflin, after a surprising amount of damage start, where we, uh, at least I felt like Olerun was getting the better half of this lane, I don't think we could say that anymore. No, and that's that's the double-edged sword of Olerun, right? Like, you're off to a good start. He's got deceptive damage. I think that a lot of people are still in that mindset of, yeah, magical ADCs take a little bit longer to come online. But in a Gilded Arrow world, Olerun is already doing, like, 70, 80 auto attacks damage uh, per basic in hand. So matching up what Streak Up's bringing has similar levels of ability damage as well. But dropping down to 0-2 at the 4-minute mark, yeah. probably not the fastest start. <laughs> that said, you're not picking them for their early game presence, even though True. they do have uh, the capacity to put out the damage that we've already seen from Christopher Robin. It's that scaling. It's that ability to take over to level 5. And despite being 0-2 to the 1-0 of Streak Up, it's actually Christopher Robin who hits 5 first. That's just downright impressive. I don't know where he's getting the farm. Maybe uh, some of the... Well, I guess there was a lot of invades on the Harpies earlier. So it maybe helps out, stacks up. Two deaths down, one level up. And that's exactly the way you want it to be. It's the same way for Jock in there. That Finrear ult available. You had mentioned Ice Ice essentially having arranged one of those, but any of these chase downs, Okeanos specifically, if you go in too far, yeah, it could be a lot of bad news. I was going to talk to you about it in picks and bans, and maybe this feels weird to bring up because it, it, there's no possibility for it, but in this kind of lane, do you prefer a Bacchus or a Sobek with the Hu Yi? Because we, me and Trelly, I think it was last week, there was a Bacchus Hu Yi lane. You throw the Mark of the Golden Crow, they just get knocked up so much that they can't do anything. It's true. Ogabri similarly feeling like he can't do much. No, oh, he's not. Yeah, yeah, that's dot damage, my guy. He got clawed. Ice Ice puts him down. I was so certain. <laughs> I was so sure. Well, I mean, it's because of the, the stage that we set, right? Jormungandr's the god of not going to die, and, uh, <laughs> and so far Ogabri's only been dying 0-2 in that lane. But looking at his build, probably just going to keep dying because no defense. It's Chronos Pendant first overall. Not exactly the most survivable item pickup. You're going to be, I don't know, using your abilities a little bit more often, though, which is nice. Nice well, Ice gets aggressive, falls back. Yeah, Chronos Pendant, maybe not what I would have uh, would have put at the top of the list. Uh -oh. We'll see how that pays off. Hey, you just used your ult. Ice Ice is here. Damage is good, but Phantomu has a little bit more in the pocket. Great ult from Ice Ice. Just CCs. Slows things down. No one's going to be able to aggress on him. That tower's there. More in the phase in the jungle. It looks like Azriel wants to fight a little more. They do get Sanctified Fields on the left, so Olerun is not feeling very safe. His beads are down as well. But it looks like Oogie Boogies do get to just run free in the jungle. I thought they were going to try to fight for more. With Ice Ice backing off, it seems like a greater Scorpion steal. Yeah, here's the thing now about how Christopher Robin doesn't have Sanctified Field or his beads. Uh, both defensive abilities are down, and he's playing Olerun, and he's already 0-2. And, and you've got... Ice Ice on your squad. You've got a so uh, Man, Sobek as if well. If I'm a jungler, I'm drooling at that. You just Streak painted up's like, the drooling. Best, like the best feast in the world. Yeah, Christopher Robin at least survives the, the Raining Suns from Streak Up. We'll see if he can uh, withstand the second Onslaught. Ice Ice hovering nearby. Maybe just a purple buff invade. But I'm expecting some fight here. Uh, it's going to be a fight. We'll just see whether or not they want to commit to it. There's a Good jump lead. in from Jockin. Good damage on the Streak Up. Picks up Ice Ice. Ice Ice uses the beads. Is able to back off. The damage is there and that Fenrir. It's forced out half health already. Gunter's made the rotation. And I just saw World Serpent deep in the background there as well. So Ogi does not have their ult either. It is a lot of pressure from Team Copyright. And they get a lot for it. They do. Ogabri has just not been able to find his footing in this lane. And that's not what you need from your Jormungandr. Jormungandr is the god of I can trust to be left alone. And it's not going to be an issue. Uh, it has only been an issue so far. <laughs> uh, B. Azrael is dealing more damage. B. Azrael is also tankier, and he's also ahead, and he's also invading the blue buff, and Ogibri is using his ultimate to escape in his own tier 2 tower at the 7 minute mark. Luckily for Ogibri, Chronos Pennant means you're going to have that ultimate a little bit more often, so silver linings where they lie.
But so far, the Ogie Bogies holistically have not been able to find their fight. They have not been able to dig in their heels and put up a defense. They haven't been the initiators on the map, and it is now reflected in the macro. Gold and experience. Yeah. Going to the team that's just doing more right now. That's the 2K gold lead. And like you said, eight minutes in, it's comfortable. That, that, that is one that you can sit on and, and feel pretty happy about. But you do need to, to look at, and we talk about this a lot, but realistically at this gold fury, especially, especially since I see the junglers over here, looks like those oracles are going to be going towards Ogie Bogie. So, you know, that, that limited vision you're going to get from them, but still onto a big objective like that, opens up a conversation for a fight, and they're going to get aggressive. Okeanos is low. But he's not going to be worried too much about it. He did seem like he was going to be in trouble. A good dash from him gets him out of there. Lou, that's going to be Azrael's name right now. He is in a little bit of danger. But, I mean, you had mentioned it. Outside of being able to use the abilities, there's a level lead. You've got your ult. You're fine over there. It's not going to stop the fights, though, Mifflin. Christopher Robin's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to run to the 100-acre woods. Nice. And it seems like this one's going to be nice for him. Yeah, that's the jungle here. Uh, oh, what a good ricochet, but yeah, there's no way you're going to chase that one down. Streak up. Playing it patiently. <laughs> that was close to nuts. Yeah, and meanwhile, Ogabri, if we want to get another check-in with him, has used his ultimate to escape into his Tier 2 tower yet again. Now, two levels down on B. Azrael on this side of the map. Luckily for Christopher Robin, it only cost him his ultimate to survive that last engagement. At least maintains the beads. Gunter is in a lot of trouble here. Fentomu decides to close the gap, but the damage is there in return. You do lose Gunter, but you trade out Winnie the Pooh. Now Fentomu gets plucked right back in. Ice Ice finds the hit, and Ice Ice gets the kill. Okeanu is making sure to lead one forward and put him in their place afterward with a couple of taunts on top of it. Asriel going to continue this, this level guy. of aggression. Yeah, Ogabri has not been allowed to just exist in this lane. And yeah, you thought it was just Asriel diving your tier two, not an Evan. No, 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 no. Ice Ice is here too. And they're going to put up the seventh kill for the team on the board. 5 0 and 1 for the best step. Lesson learned for Jormungandr. If you want early CDR, maybe Breastplate of Valor going to be the option going forward. Uh, survive a little bit more, and you still get your 20%. Ice Ice going for a speed buff invade. Successful in picking that one up, and Fantomu gets the uh, the walk of shame to clear out that very last small camp on that side of the map. And Team Copyright can essentially do no wrong, and I think that's going to continue uh -oh. here. Chris Robin, it's aggressive. Yeah, he walks. This is just the wrong way to approach this lane. Your tower is over there, and you have to worry about a good ricochet, good suns, good damage. One more auto is all it needs, but it's going to be the leap from Streak Up that gets the kill. Jockin plucked back. Jockin just decides to leave because there's nothing this Finner is going to be able to do. Streak Up has by and far taken control of this lane. He has. Chris Robin has got. Good scaling coming his way, but it's going to be a whiles off considering we're already looking at two-level deficit. So where can the Ogie Bogies fight? Where is it they need to root their aggression? And I think it's exactly where we identified in P's and B's around your strongest early game piece, the Medusa. Group up on mid. Start playing in that mid 3v3. But so far, the Ogie Bogies have been largely restricted. Jockin specifically has been restricted to playing in the duo lane, trying to make sure that Christopher uh, Robin can survive some of these fights. Christopher Robin not exactly helping Jockin in that situation by walking in into one of the <laughs> most aggressive pathings into a Ho Yi that I've seen in a while. Lose out on his beat as well. The run will maintain the ultimate, so potentially can survive this next fight, but maybe you get the jungler Fantomu to rotate over, considering Streak Up has legitimately been playing on the tower line this entire time. That is one avenue back in for a nemesis. I just want to see the Ogie Bogies pick a fight. I want to see them pick an engagement and, and execute on it themselves. We'll see whether or not they can, if they even get to dictate one at this point. I don't, know, God, I don't know if man. there's a lot. I mean, when this is happening to you, there's not so much you can do. Azrael does drop the ult. And we get Ogie Breeze in response. That World Servant. I, I'm going to say, I don't care that he's using it defensively. It still looks super cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is just such a, a cinematic ultimate. Unfortunate for him that it is a yeah, I just need to not die here button right now. Yeah, this is Aegis and Heavenly button. Meanwhile, Christopher Robin drops his Aegis, and that's called Sanctified Field. Will force Team Copyright out of that Tier 1 tower, but only for a moment, buying the rest of the team time to rotate their way over. Yeah, Jock and Fantomu, Winnie the Pooh even, hanging out in the jungle. Streak off Ice Ice, they get far enough away in the lane. Okeanos as well, just kind of, I think, essentially a walking ward at that point, seeing everybody rotate over and getting the comms out to his team. They back off, and with the rest of Oogie Boogies backing away, this is actually worse news for Christopher Robin, because that means Okeanos wants to get aggressive. Waiting for that pluck cooldown, streak up, trying to stay aggressive with him, but they don't want to overextend Okeanos forced to ult. I don't know if this is something you want to chase down, that Hu Yi is still here.
they're going to let it be. Yeah, if you want any type of indicator on how poorly a game is going for one team, look at the supports. Okeanos at level 11 has got level parity just about with 50% of the Ogi bogies. He's only one level down on the jungler, one level down on the soul laner. Oh, I take it back. Now he's 12, so he does have parity yet again. That's the support for Team Copyright. We're not even evaluating the carries who have all established themselves some pretty significant leads. Maybe the most prominent of, uh, of which is... B. Asriel, who has gone uncontested so far in the soul lane, establishing nearly three levels up. It has been a very comfortable lane for him. There's a good beats from Christopher Robin. Unfortunately, that's going to be down for a little while. Jockin goes in, but you're in three, man. This might not work out the way you want. Streak up Ice Ice just trying to vie for who's going to get picked up. And it is Ice Ice who gets pulled back. Suns get dropped. Jockin's good taking ult. damage, but he's not taking as much as he used to. Instead, it's Christopher Robin just deleted off the map. A great ricochet from Street Up finds the damage necessary. And now Azrael rotated in looking for the stun. CC immunity from Winnie the Pooh keeps him alive for now. But that tier two tower is not safe enough. Phantomu has to double dash to get out of there, but it's not enough range to escape Gunter. Now you've got the World Serpent and he's jumping around. It is not saving your team. Winnie the Pooh still in a little bit of danger here. Okeanos wants a little more. He's going to dash towards Azrael. They're going to let that one lie and go for a Gold Fury. Man, team Copyright is just doing it, doing the most. They're doing too much, all right? Uh, everything's going their way. Tier 1 tower dives, Tier 2s as well. And that's another fight where the Ogie Bogies are trying to play a reactive. They're trying to rotate in, try and limit some of that aggression. But they rotate too slowly. And when they do rotate, it's one member here, one yeah. member there, maybe two stacking up at certain points into a four or five stack of team copyright. I can't imagine what the Ogie Bogies conversation is like once they realize that B. Asriel is level 15 in their back line, in their tier two <laughs> tower, in the duo lane. Uh, it's probably, oh man, Ogiri, I'm sorry you had to deal with this for so long because legitimately I'm not sure there's a great answer to this Amaterasu just yet. If anything is going to kill B. Asriel, it's first burning the beads, then it's a Ragnarok, plus the ultimate from Nemesis. You need both of those tools stacked on top of each other to shut down this front line. And so far, we haven't seen that combo on anyone. Well, and we're starting to see, first off, yeah, not only have we not seen the combo, but we're also seeing things to shut that down. I mean, Azure, you mentioned the beads. I, he's got Nemean online. He's got a block That's stack no available. Yeah, Christopher Robin might be able to get out of here. Sanctified Fields is putting in a lot of work here, just slowing things down. But the damage is not in return. Jockin comes to the lane. It only saves you for so long. Christopher Robin goes down. Rotation over. Phantomu finally getting aggressive. He's trying to go for Streak Up. Good streak Agus. Up has to use the Aegis. Great job. And a great ult from Ice Ice. At least pulls one more back. Streak Up does go down, but they've made it a three-man turnaround. Ice Ice with a huge ult for the CC. Fortunately, they do still lose both their relics there for Streak Up. That, it's a good kill for Okie Bogies. It just cost a lot to get there. You know, I actually do like the target selection from Jock in there. Initially, I was head scratching. You know, why is he using Ragnarok on the Sobek instead of going onto the Ho Yi? Maybe realizing though, Streak Up didn't need to be uh, Ragnarok. Instead, kind of displaces Okeanos, buys some space for the rest of his team, and then the Ogabris, or Ogi Bogies rather, could just walk in and find their kill. Speaking of walk in and find your kill, Azriel is just bullying in the, the right lane right now. I mean, Three levels up <laughs> over Ogibri, four levels up over Phantomu. And uh, unless he does, yeah, okay, so he's playing it safe. He's going to allow the back there, and I think that is exactly the way it has to be worded. I don't think that back goes through if he wants him to stop. So Phantomu able to back away. Tier 2 tower and left goes down, Mifflin, and you want to talk about gold lead. Uh, how about 10,000? 16 minutes in, that's, that's a pretty hefty chunk of change in your pocket. Yeah, 16,000 experience as well, Gorn. Yes. At, uh, at the 16-minute mark, that's a lot. Generally, when we see experience leads that heavy, it, it's like once everyone's already level 20, and it's been a very long game. Yeah. Simply not the case. That is a ridiculous pacing for everyone on this side. It's a big number. Worth noting, though, I also like Ogre's build more so now. I, it's a, I'm a huge proponent of if you're behind, building defense does nothing. Ogabri agrees. We'll see how much that pays off. So far, still 0-3 and 0. Jockin gets plucked back into a waiting counter. Good body blocks from Ice Ice. Yeah, unfortunately for you, Jockin, there's not a lot of places to go there. Christopher Robin trying to get a little bit of work done. And this is where you win games like this, right? If you're down in gold, you're down in fights, you try to win by split pushing and taking control of the map. Unfortunately, it does open up a conversation here. They know that Christopher Robin's not here, so it's going to be a 3v5 at best for Oogie Boogies. They take a free Fire Giant. 17 and a half minutes in. 
They lose potentially the tier two in this process. And then they can just take the pick of the litter. There's only three towers left standing for Oogie Bogies. Yeah, team copyright, uh, I think, are, are very much okay with letting a tier two tower fall down. Look how that affects the gold charts. It doesn't, by the way. It, it, it legitimately didn't. We're still 10,000 gold in the lead. You know that the Oogie Bogies aren't in a position to even leverage the fact that there's an exposed bird. Maybe if the game goes another 15 minutes, that's when we see the value of that split push play from Christopher Robin. But at the pacing uh, uh, that we're seeing right now, 15 more minutes, wishful thinking. You know, I wanted to talk to you earlier about the, the Nemean, plus the Shoguns, plus the Witchblade that are online. Two of those on Azrael, one on Okeanos. Uh, I think even without those at this point, that copyright has a, a pretty substantial lead that you could talk about how, how difficult it would be to fight into these tanks. There's a lot of auto attackers that are just suffering, it feels like, for Oogie Boogies. They don't have a lot of avenues to get aggressive, and like you said, like you can't deal with Azrael here. No, yeah, Nemesis. Jockin uh, on the Fenrir, Chris Robin on the Ola run, even Medusa. Yeah, Nemean stops that. Yeah. Witchblade stops that. Maybe you could say Brutalize is going to deal some of that damage regardless, but he's not really the damage dealer at this point in the game. Uh, no dedicated damage items picked up for the Fenrir support, which is pretty par for the course. So where does that leave us for the Ogie Bogies? We have to evaluate now their ability to defend against the five-man core in a, in a siege situation. And it's not good in a 5v4, and I won't evaluate the 5v5 now because it simply will not happen. 40 seconds on the grayscale for Fantomu, and Team Copyright, I think, could just go ahead and walk wherever. I'm surprised to see him taking this uh, lackadaisical approach so far. I'd be yeah. on the Phoenix line, but instead they're, they're savoring their dub. You've got two minutes of a fire giant power play available to you. Oni Fury's up. Everybody back. <laughs> they're all stumbling out of base as of right now. So maybe they're going to be a little more aggressive. Maybe this is the call for the Oni Fury before the Phoenix. And just try to clean up what you can in the jungle. I mean, like you said, it feels uh, lackadaisical was like the perfect word for it. Like, hey, I appreciate they're it. Just, they're calm. They're just kind of hanging out. They're walking through the jungle, not doing <laughs> anything too insane. But now they're going to get aggressive and they're going to go for this left side Phoenix. And the defense of the Ogie Bogies is now again at the five man, but it's going to be hard to execute on. Sanctified Field is that major cooldown. Watch that yeah. for the Ogie Bogies. When it's dropped, that's their whole fight. Jockin goes in. Jockin gets stunned. Jockin takes half his health bar in the blink of an eye and is not getting there away from this one. Finally, forced to ult away. There's the Sanctified Field. Slows things down. And it might turn things around. Finally, one kill getting picked up. Ogie Bogies gets rid of Okeanos. The Phoenix does go down. Christopher Robin gets traded out here. And it's a double kill for Gunter, who continues use this aggression Ogabri in the wrong spot a lot of low health bars here for team copyright and they're able to at least get rid of the mid laner but now you're throwing bodies back and forth four down let's go ahead and make it five and walk into the titan room and in this game it's team copyright with game one and they don't even need minions i guess the wave's right there they're eh, walk in tank it up no nobody there to defend and the titan cannot defend itself oh my God. team copyright with a clean clinical victory. Only five kills the Ogie Bogies at the end of the day, and I think those are five kills that Team Copyright more so just gave over. They said, all right, we'll trade this for an objective. We'll trade this for the three Tier 2 towers. And you know what? Those are great trades. They got, and you know what? They did get two kills at the very end. So you know what? You can, you can hang your hat on that one. It feels pretty good. I think some of the team fight was there. We'll have to see whether or not they can change things around. We'll talk about Copyright and look at <laughs> just how well they won that game right after this.
for the most part. Welcome back here to the SCCEU. Of course, one up now for Team Copyright. They just get themselves a very clean win. They only drop five deaths throughout the entire game, and they look pretty solid while they did it. A little rough early start, but <laughs> once they got to like three minutes in, what was it, Mifflin? Uh, it really did feel like things just fell pretty much right into their lap. Yeah, I don't even know if rough early start is, like, correct. Like, Streak Up took a little bit of damage too early. He did. He took a little bit of damage from Oleron. We said, wow, that's a lot of damage from Oleron, and that's the last time we talked about Oleron's damage. Yeah, that's not That wrong. was on first wave, by the way. <laughs> and it was 40 seconds into the game. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. That's, uh, not, that's not where you want to yep. be. I mean, you have to look at, at everybody in that game. I think Streak Up absolutely takes control of the, the left side lane. Ice Ice kind of bullies everybody all over the place. I mean, this Bastet was like a silent killer in a lot of regards, and maybe not so silent is the way to describe it. These ults were on point. The damage was there. I don't think you can let Ice Ice have this pick. Yeah, Ice Ice was living <laughs> the dream in that he would rotate to a lane, find a kill, and then if he never made a rotation again to that lane, he'd already done enough. His team ran with those leads uh, immediately. It was an early rotation from Ice Ice that showed, shut down Ogabri. I believe it was on third wave, around the two and a half minute mark. From there, B. Azriel uh, legitimately went on a cyber bully campaign up against Ogabri, just zoning him in the tier two tower from levels five to 15, and then rotated out and set up for a gold free immediately afterward. Team Copyright dominated the entirety of the map, and Ogi Bogies didn't really have much going for him, despite going for a very strong early game aggression composition. I don't think they played around the pieces that they had initially intended to. I think their draft was just fine. It was just a couple of stumbles throughout the early that stifled their ability to execute on their own plan. When you have a Medusa on your team, I think it is just so incredibly valuable to play around her the second she's like level four because Viper Shot Lacerate at level four is doing upwards of 60% of anybody's HP bar. But nobody rotated through. Nobody went to Winnie the Pooh's lane and Winnie the Pooh said, okay, well, I'm not going to Lacerate on my own and just stagnated. I'm surprised that Azriel only had two kills. <laughs> I feel like it was way more than that. I think we saw a lot of that damage get thrown out there. And, you know, Ice Ice gets a couple of them, so maybe there's, there's the, the you know parody, at least in the assists, is what they're there for. But something interesting, I think, to see how, how little kills he got. Uh, put that in quotes, because they just... They kind of did a whole lot, and two kills for solo lane is pretty, pretty, pretty good for him. Streak You're up backtracking, man. You gotta trust yourself. A, yeah, okay. Uh, streak up. <laughs> 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 I don't even remember what I was saying. That, and that's so. So that's where we're at. We'll see what these teams do in picks and bans here for game number two. I think you have to be worried, and this is like a meta discussion at this point. I don't know if Hu Yi is like the best hunter in the game right now. In fact, I would argue he's he's definitely not. There's got bound to be someone above him. Like, at least two. But you can't fight him in the jungle, right? There's way too many avenues where he, he's just bouncing around and it has control over on the left-hand side of the map. I mean, you can fight him in the jungle. Just don't get triple bounce. That's the entire okay, strategy. Okay, yeah, there you go. Just don't get triple bounce. Get triple bounce, you probably can't fight uh, Someone fight in chat in right now, don't get triple bounce, forehead. Yeah, I mean, five head even. Five like, head. That, that, like, come <laughs> on, man. Uh, but you're, you're right to say that Hoi simply don't is a little bit more conditional than I would argue, or than I would say these other more meta hunters are. Izanami's always doing Izanami stuff, right? Yeah. She's always clearing the wave faster. She's always got that circular science. She's always got the ability to just be invisible when you want to. So Izanami is going to be more applicable in the majority of situations. Medusa is always going to have that massive damage out, but always yeah. have that large AoE team fight ultimate. So going to be more applicable in some of these team fight scenarios. Ho Yi is always going to have some pretty decent 1v1, but as far as playing from behind or hitting the maximum bit of damage, it's a little bit more conditional. You need to set up these situations, fight inside the jungle, fight in these tight corridors so you can get maximum value from the pick. Also, isn't most of Hoagie's passive, like, like centered on if he gets hit with a crit, like yep. that. That's pretty pretty specific when it comes down to it. Good in the meta right now. Wind Demon still comes online a little bit later, but it does still get picked up. I'm interested in this. You get a Medusa, you get a Kepri, you get an Izanami ban from Team Copyright here, Mifflin. And that that Medusa was banned, knowing that Bastet was going to go to the other side. So they're confident that they're going to be able to deal with it. They get the Amaterasu. This time they strip away the Finrir. Presumably for support, but could still go jungle with the Amaterasu there. How do you feel about that trade? I think the trade's just fine. If 
I mean, I agree that if you want Medusa, you're, you're getting Medusa having left Bastet you up. There's no way that I uh, we see the Ogie Bogies kind of take the trade of, oh, okay, well, Medusa's still there. Maybe we take that instead of the Bastet. Either way, I think you come away with a very strong top two for copy, uh, copyright, but I suppose they're just not interested. Why go towards it? You can just pick up the Ho Yi yet again and probably have similar levels of performance. But... You know, in an ideal world, I probably am leaving Medusa there and then potentially looking towards that next best support because you know you're taking Fenrir, which is yeah. likely slated for your own support. So you could limit, I don't know, a Geb. You can limit a Yamoja, something like that to slow down the Ogi Bogies. I will say Ice Ice does like Fenrir, so I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being a, a be. complete dynamic shift over into a jungle. I will say, though, Bologna, top three man last game. I believe Agni was in the bottom two for team copyright to take away from for Mogi Bogey. So this feels like two picks that might actually have a lot of merit to them if they were getting banned before. Agni maybe was like a, a kind of standard-ish ish meta ban, but that Bologna, I mean, if Bologna gets banned, you see Ama locked in and your next response is Jormungandr and, and, and what we're seeing right now, I think this Bologna has something Heal to do. Yeah, the Bologna, I would argue just just by merit of existing as Bologna is probably going to be doing a little bit more so than the Yormagadr. Worth noting that Yormagadr put out 10,000 damage top on the damage. team, only about 3,000 less than that top was all damage of that lobby. Chronos Penance <laughs> into Divine Ruin into Sphere of Desolation. Mans was just stacking damage. Had no survivability. Um, the Yumoja that we talked about briefly a moment ago does get picked up for the Ogi Bogey. So now we get a better idea of what that duo lane is going to start to look like That's once right. this last pick is taken. You've got a... Relatively aggressive early game support. Yamoja has phenomenal clear, great ability to displace without having to dedicate her own body, and phenomenal chain CC off of her own CC. One of the few gods in the game is just going to keep stunning you by herself. But you match it up with a pick that is going to take a little bit longer to match that aggression. Charybdis is the god of, if I don't want to fight you, I simply won't, and you can't do anything about it. But on the other flip side, you don't have the same levels of aggression as maybe the Medusa could have brought, or maybe one of these other massively aggressive hunters that has already been out banned out by copyright. You're very safe. I think this could be the Ogi Bogies identifying that they never played around their mid laner last time around, so they're going to put this Charybdis alone on an island and have Yamoja shift over towards that mid 3v3 a little bit more quickly. Now, and that's a an entire, an entire beast to try and crack. Yamoja has been, last year, the most banned god. I, I actually good. think second most banned god behind Tiamat. One of the most picked gods. She did a lot. 140 second cooldown on her ultimate. As well as, like, you know, some of the healing nerfs that have come through. Even more so here in Season 9. It feels like she got a couple of hits. And and she's disappeared from the... Do you think she's still, like, like, like good? Or, or where does she stand now? Uh, I think that she is... Probably solidly like A plus tier. She's no longer the the triple S that we saw on yeah. release Yamoja or even like tail end of season eight where she's just like single S. I think we're looking at an A plus god. I think the most major change that has affected Yamoja and the majority of structure based supports is the change to Phantom. No longer is it its own dedicated relic, but instead has become kind of assimilated into that shell tree. You got the Phantom shell. Not yeah. only are you benefiting from the ability to walk through structures, but also the ability to have more HP, be more survivable regardless, has really made these picks like Ymir, like Kabraken, like Yamoja feel like they get a little bit more, uh, less value rather. Especially the Odins of the world, man. Uh, Shell is just so good. You pick up three, I'm not feeling bad about that. Yeah. You had to pick up two Phantoms in the past, you're feeling pretty bad about that. Yeah, it hurt. Man, it really hurt. Now <laughs> I can be like, yeah, I'm going to just, hey, guys, don't worry. I got shell. Yeah. Have funsies. Uh, you walk out of there. It is five beads to start things off, though, on the side of Oogie Boogies. They are very worried about the CC. And you know what, Mifflin, after last game, I don't blame them too much for it. I mean, that's going to slow down at least the Finrear, slow down, theoretically, Asriel, although he didn't rotate uh, until much later in the game. We'll see. How that ends up working out for him. A couple of uh, back and forth so far in mid. No crazy amount of damage being done yet. A and everything else has been pretty standard. Charybdis, I will note, did not have any games in Europe played so far. And Christopher Robin going to be the first one to do so. She she feels pretty good. <laughs> I agree. I think Charybdis is pretty high up on my, my Hunter power rankings. I think what she brings to your team is very, very versatile. The ability to get aggressive with that ultimate in that mid game. I think around level 13, level 14, she can start matching some of the aggression of these other picks, but main strength being that she's nearly unkillable 
removes herself from the play field with the third ability, has CC immunity and additional movement speed with the ultimate resetting ultimate as well. You can just essentially just be another Scylla for your squad. Yeah. I don't hate this pick. I, I think she's incredibly strong. It's just whether or not I would have matched her up with Yamoja yet to be seen. I guess we'll yeah we'll have to watch this duel lane carefully. Mifflin, I'm gonna give you a compliment that just uh, while I was oh, listening you. to you, uh, I like your sideburns. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I don't know why I just noticed them, and they look pretty good, man. I, I appreciate just wanted you that. To know. And we'll see Blushing. whether or not Oogie Bogies can look pretty good. Fantomu taking too much damage though in mid lane. Ice Ice able to get first blood second time in a row, and just the blink of an eye, it all goes downhill for this Bastet already. Some aggression, but this is at least some glorious nature, right? All of a sudden, Azrael's not completely dominating this lane, and so you lose the first blood, but at least you're not losing everywhere. No, not at all. I mean, Azrael's like level three right now. Give him a second, Gore. All right, maybe <laughs> maybe he will. It was eventually. level three that they started. Okay, fair enough. You're, it is a marked improvement from what we saw in game one. A streak up, steps up alone in the wave. Support rotates out, and streak up. Uh, just straight up loses that trade. I wonder what Okeanos is up to. Maybe just trying to get in towards that purple buff, but streak up still yeah. alone. Where's the Fenrir? I I'm I don't know who I'm more concerned with. Like Fenrir hanging out for the purple buff, streak up still standing there when he's taking that much damage. Granted, Soul. I mean, he's got some sustain. He's got a multi pot and a health pot. So I guess now not too worried about it. There's but the pressure. There's a lot of damage. It was maybe unnecessary. Jockin comes in. Tries to take that one away. It's not going to be successful. Okeanos gets the purple buff and walks away. Pretty happy at this point. A little bit of farm. You had mentioned the pressure. This has been, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it. Yamoja, well, I, I say I hate to say it, is exactly where you put her, right? Like, she's just not not as strong as she once was. And I think that Okeanos is able to, to kind of flex that. Even even control the, the minion wave is going there towards copyright. Right now, it's not the right time to mention that, but, you know. They look good. <laughs> I've been racking my brain thinking about that plan. Now I, I get it, okay? So Streak Up gets to solo out that wave, ticks over to level 4 first, realizing that he's got some self-sustain in the kit and so many potions, doesn't need to concern himself, finds the pressure, goes in towards purple, and now has a significant advantage in this fight. Yeah, we'll see how well this works out. Streak Up doesn't have a lot of mana. Fantomu comes behind. There's the Disapparate. Jockin is the first one to die. Ice Ice joins the fray. Streak Up still alive, and they want more if your team copyright. Big leap from Fantumu goes back in the root him. and might be able to find the damage. You're going to have to get under the tower here, and that's going to be that's the damage massive. over time. You're going to go one for one. That is a big pickup, but it is still two for one overall because of Jockin's death. Fantomu's play there was the only winning line he had available to himself. If he walks out, he just dies. He's not yep. getting a return kill. He, he's not getting any more farm. He's sacrificing a lot. Ice Eyes would have just dominated, and that would have been the end of the story. So instead, leaps back aggressive, hedging his bets on the fact that Streak Up was feeling confident enough to at least hover nearby. He didn't even look. It wasn't as if Fantomu 180 to see if Streak Up was still there. He just said, I hope he is, and if he is, I'll get a kill. Picks it up. Also ticks over to level 5, so he's not sacrificing too much time on the map. We would be talking about a level 4 to 6 in the jungle. But now that ultimate pressure is going to be available to Fantomu. That was a very heads-up play, and that's a hard decision to make. Credit to the jungler of Ogie Bogies. And I think, like you said, even larger for him. Because his worst-case scenario there, like you said, while well, hoping for Streak Up to exist, beads used by Christopher Robin. Okiana Salt's going to be down. Jockin's over here on the side of the map. It seems like this Christopher Robin's so low that it, it makes me nervous. Seems like this one's going to gonna at least deter overall. But, you know, his worst case scenario, you had mentioned, if you don't take that jump, you're dead. If you take that jump and Streak Up's not there, you're still dead. So, like, the worst spot is just, okay, I, instead of dying closer to my tower, I died closer to their tower. So maybe it just works out well for him. Like you said, a really good calculation from Fantomu. We'll see how well that works out. He's making another rotation over here to the dual lane. Purple buff. Ooh, Barra combo. Does get dropped down for Ogie Bogie. So a successful steal, able to balance things out a little bit more after the last invade. Try to put things in favor of Ogie Bogies. Still about a 1,500 gold lead, though, for Team Copyright. And they're trying to push that a little further. It was about 2,000, eight and a half minutes in. And they're approaching a very similar path. Fantomu rotates over to the dual lane. Ice Ice still in the neighborhood. Dangerous. Damage is there onto Okeanos. There's going to be a good riptide to get Jockin out. I think Ogie Bogies can hit the pause button for now. Team copyright, though. Well, I mean, they're happy with it. They've got so much farm on the map. And Fantomu hovering nearby. That cat will block the vampiric bats. And 
nearly pulls in eye size with that ultimate, but it's all just zone, just to steal away some of those flowers. But don't think it hasn't been taken note of. Winnie the Pooh starts his rotation. Yeah, Okeanos is incredibly low. Good leap from Ice Ice. Just dodges out the stun. So Winnie the Pooh shows up, goes and showcases what Agni can do in these fights. Uh -huh. But now I think he's going to showcase yep, yep. The, the wrong nature. Dash on cooldown damage from Gunter. And Ice Ice puts another on the board. Four and zero. 100% kill participation. All of the kills on the jungle for Team Copyright. Yeah, here's the thing about Agni when he doesn't have lead. Uh, pretty weak, I'd say. Vampiric Bat's not nearly enough. Can the Taurus Oh, no! <laughs> he lazy-backed, man! Oh, no! All right, well, I mean, Chalk and... Who's predicting that? Am I dying? Gore, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Are you dying there if you're jocking? Yes. I'm dying there 100%. You, no shot I'm thinking about the, I think the Minotaur. E I think even if you run further out of that, that tower line, I think you're still probably dying there. Something happens. A divine I, th I think if he just keeps walking, he, he's probably okay. <laughs> chat, I want you to put a one in the chat if you're dying there too. And be honest. I'm getting caught out. Gore's getting caught out. So I want to expect at least 85% of you to be saying you got caught out as well. Problem. Eh, 90, 93. You think you're better than 93% of chat? They're nuts, dude. No, I saw some like gold No, threes. I said 93% of chat should be getting caught out there because of, like, the, that's with us. We're yeah. Them, so, like, we're as good as them, is yeah. what you're saying. So that's 7% better? But they're, better. like, you they're all talking about, I, I don't know math, man. 20? You're what did, what number guy. did you say? I don't remember. I added a number like to your 85. number. 85? Yeah. I don't know. A lot of you should probably be dying there. Yeah. I die there. Uh, not only do I die there, I have the store open already. <laughs> like 100%. That's why I die there. It's because I'm shopping, dude. Already. Something that, it, look, we, we always catch that out. Every now and then you can tell when someone's backing with the shop open. Uh, that one wasn't one of those. That was no. just Jockin, unfortunately, getting dashed down by a Minotaur. We'll see if Azriel is going to get dashed down here. The answer seems to be no. <laughs> there was a four-man rotation, four people on Ogie Bogie standing on the right-hand side of the map, and they each went back to their lane. Azrael and Ogie Bray going to be in a uh, just, what is it? I guess, symbiotic relationship. I'll hit you, you hit me. We both live. We're both fine. We'll call it off. Is that symbiotic? I don't know if it's symbiotic. I don't it's think very so. That's when you're, like, thriving off of each other. Yeah. This there, is it's a vi virolic? Is that a word? Like, it's a virus? Bro, how many times I got to tell you I dropped out of college, bro? How many times are you going to make me admit that on broadcast? Well, you can read a lot and know a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> There's the hammer. Fair enough. <laughs> from Oogie. And he's getting the better end of this trade. Azrael with a good dash seems like he's going to get out of there. And Oogie's not going to get aggressive. Jockin's on this side of the map. And unfortunately, Jockin is getting bullied. That's going to be a blue buff invade. And so Ogi gets the better half, at least of the lane, but unfortunately is losing the jungle all around him. Oh, this is tough. Ice Ice is walking up just to heat check this speed buff and will realize that it is up, and he will realize that Phantomu is nowhere near to defend it whatsoever. He's on their red buff, actually. Okiano's getting involved in mid. Maybe forces out beads here if he's lucky. Yeah, it's, it's going to get the pickup, is oh, going to get the beads. The now too. has the backup. And there's another one for Ice Ice. Gunter does get killed off. Fantomu goes incredibly deep. And now Ice Ice forced to bat out of hell. Jockin with a great ult gets one of those. And oh, he stopped his back. In a great position. Okeanos is too low. This is going to be a free kill for Fantomu. Runs forward, gets two. But can he get out? Ice Ice needs a little bit of damage, but you got to thread the needle. And it seems like the body blocks and the hard bodies in front of him are going to be just enough that the jungler gets to walk away. Okeanos flinched and died for it. Had he just channeled his back, would have been in base right now, spending up all that gold. Instead, is in base right now, spending up all that gold in grayscale. Nearly, we see Christopher Robin fall down, but Nothing again, that's Caribbean Caribbean. Uh, If she doesn't want to fight, she simply won't. Uh, Jockin has now rotated. Going to be able to avoid the stun. There's the damage. And unfortunately, I mean, Jockin, he's low, but you have no Omi to work with. This Umoja has to watch his streak up, gets the better half. Almost baited in, essentially, there for Christopher Robin. Almost was. Absolutely. 100%. He died because of it. Yep. So streak up in a much more comfortable position. Finally getting uh, at least some sort of kill in that lane. It's been relatively quiet in duo for a while. It has been, but the leads have still established. Two levels for both the Hunter and the Support. Spear the Magus finished up for streak up, so I don't expect we see Christopher Robin ever step up to him again in this lane and maybe once the five on five starts to happen and Logi bogies find themselves in a very similar position as game one team yeah. copyright it may have oh taken a little bit longer they may have uh, given up a couple more kills than what we saw in game one but golden experience it's right back to where it was where did they even get this 
Where where are they finding 4,000 gold on the map? <laughs> they, they didn't take any towers. They haven't taken any gold, fury, or pyro. It was in their lockers when they when they were shoving these poindexters <laughs> in there, <laughs> making fun of their pocket protectors, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, no, they just keep. I'm impressed with them. I mean, 4,000, 11 minutes in, it has been a very substantial lead here for Team Copyright without a majority of the neutral objectives. Finally, it looks like they're going to put one on board with the Pyromancer. They've got a lot of vision over on the Gold Fury as well, so it's not like there's an easy response for Ogie Bogies here to try and start up an uh, objective of their own and go for a trade. With Streak Up's positioning as well? I, I don't know if you want to fight this. Okianos wants them to fight. He's trying to get them to come in. And unfortunately, they're not going to take the bait there. Ogie Bogies just have to sit back and, and figure this out. What do you do in a game like this? When, when you're down 4,000 gold, 5,000 gold now, Where's your work back in? It's probably around trading objectives. You really are. You got to convince yourself that you scale harder too. That's the the whole mental game. Is like Team Cap is like, don't worry, <laughs> we're vibing. Uh, but this is not vibing. This is quite the opposite. Yeah, Jockin. Hey, his beads are down. Oh, they're now, vibing. And so is his life. Their streak up though. Finally taken down Fantomu. Great beeline to the back line. Gets rid of at least one carry. With a good rotation, they might be able to do more, but there's Ice Ice oh, now keeping the fight going. Phantom who has no mana to work with, just enough for the leap. He's going to get chased down. Beautiful leap backwards. Unfortunately, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Either way, the kill ends up happening. They get taken down after what was a good punishing play for him. One for one. Had it been any, it was two for one. Uh, you two pick for up, one. yeah, you get right. Jockin and Fantomu. Had it been anyone besides Fantomu, value trade for the Ogi Bogies. Uh, but there's only one person on the Ogi Bogies who has any semblance of a bounty, and uh, he's currently in the grayscale. So, in trading Fantomu, I think Team Copyright still come out ahead on that trade. Now, with a Gold Fury as well. Had, yeah, had, tough. Yeah, you had pointed out Jockin. <laughs> Uh, first off, had respawned at that point, which is yeah. what I forgot about. He's level seven. Four, four levels down in support. That hurts. There's a great Riptide, though. Let's talk about that one. You know what? I don't care that you're level eight and you're three levels down. You were able to at least get your hand on that one. That's a big, big bounty. I mean, that was a 5 and O Kamazots prior to this. Yeah, that, you're going to see that gold tick upward. That's just ice ice falling down. Might as well be That's a gold fury oh for the Ogie Bogies. But that said... <laughs> Now we've got some more bounties to collect on the map. I believe that kill went over to Winnie the Pooh, and Winnie the Pooh is anything but safe in this game. So Ice Eyes can respawn, try and work his way back over. Experience gaps have started to close themselves up a bit, though. Junglers have reached uh, equity again. They're both at level 13. Uh, you've closed that 2 to 3 level gap that Gunter was able to establish earlier, now only one in the mid. The Ogi Bogies, they've got some fight back. They're going to continue trying to fight back. Okeanos oh my God. manages to dodge out Fantomu's ult and use his own, gets the beads on top of that. Uh, for Okeanos, that, that is through and through just such a good trade. Yeah, Fantomu just got smoked. I mean, he, he, <laughs> he just got smoked in that one, man. He he should not wow. have been a – that's why you don't go for that ultimate point blank as well because it's a very long wind-up on, on a, and an audible cue. So we just get the Ragnarok. Okiano says, uh, okay, I mean, you're right next to me. I'll go ahead and take you back. Burns away the bead, survives the ultimate. And now Fantomu loses out on a lot of that pressure on the map. And, well, he's probably going to lose out on his life if Okianos can lock eyes with him again once that Ragnarok is back and available. And Okianos, well, he's, he's keeping eyes out there. He's not going to be able to get the Oracles. This one does get secured by Ogi Bogies. That's where he was keeping his pressure. For a team with as hefty of a gold lead, and by the way, it's gone up to what, 6,000 almost at this point. I was expecting more aggression. Here it is. They go forward onto the red buff. Jock and Tevin PTSD doesn't flashbacks. It like, <laughs> doesn't look like they were able to secure it, but they are going to strip away the offerings and try to strip away Christopher Robin's life. They are going to continue chasing. That is the CC immunity from the ult for this Charybdis. Oh, good but wall. They do so much. Actually, a brilliant wall. Locks and Okian is punished for the over-aggression. And now it's Ice Ice forced to use the ult defensively, tries to get away. Blink used defensively as well. Fantomu getting aggressive. They don't have enough to go forward. Whiff. Ult through the wall, doesn't connect. Jockin's trying to lead the way, but you're too low level. You're taking too much. And Azrael is here to fight. The stun's on two and hits three. The damage is almost there, but it's Azrael who ends up getting turned around on. Ice Ice goes deep, but Ice Ice bit off too much than he can chew and now completely chased down a trade that is just so bad for copyright, but so good for Ogie Bogies. Yeah, Jockin and Christopher Robin get to limp out of there with just a teensy bit of HP left and available. Fantomu going to try and double dip on this engagement, but maybe just baiting Ogabri forward. 
as Streak Up takes the bait. Streak Up here, but surrounded by three. They might be low, but it's still three. Gunter as well in the area. Christopher Robin is back. Here comes Okeanos. Looks like they're slowing down. Yeah, Oogie. Oh, Chuck! <laughs> Oogie Bogies want to get out. That's the PTSD moment. That Minotaur is chasing you. He wants more. But it looks like Jockin can get out this time. So will the rest of the Oogie Bogies. And they don't get any obscene objectives. There's nothing nuts afterward. But that's still a huge team fight in favor of them. Mifflin, I'm actually surprised to see that the gold doesn't take a, a heavier chunk away than that. Well, what did the Oogie Bogies do after they got the kills? They stuck but, around, kept a, kept yeah, up a team right. fight, didn't clear out a single neutral camp, didn't clear out any of their own camps, and instead lost a tier one tower on the tail end because they decided to chase out and try and finish that kill. On to streak up, so team copyright, even in trading their lives, don't lose much in the macro farm, and instead actually come out ahead from it. Tier one tower in mid falls down, pyromancer pulled out by ice ice, and the ogie bogies nowhere in response sure it was a great team fight i will not take away from it very well executed by the ogie bogies phenomenal trading of the aggro they they really didn't stick around for way too long in the fight itself <laughs> but it's the stuff after the stuff that all yeah. goes to the more veteran team is trading of the aggro what we call whatever happened with the design team <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, too soon i don't yeah. know no it's been fine he's, he's yeah he's like chilling you know like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. that's not a too soon <laughs> I don't know. Like the lamenting of aggro leaving. I could still. Uh, you can lament all you want, bro. Okay. Well, vibing. You're, you're vibing. We'll see whether or not they can find any anything on the map at this point. There's going to be Azrael. That's a huge kill, especially early on. But a couple of ults invested in locking that one down. So a lot of heavy forward investment. We'll see if they can use anything to pay off. Oni Fury is going to be spawning up here. Oogie Boogies have the better positioning. They're going to be able to start this up for free if they want it, but Ice Ice is in the neighborhood as well, Myth. It's not guaranteed at this point. No, it's a four versus five, but a heavy, heavy gold lead for Team Copyright might equalize those odds here. Biazreal steps up a little too aggressive in the middle of the map and forces out a couple ultimates, but trades out his own life. Take a peek at the Relic selection from Team Copyright. No Phantom Shells, not a single one. Don't seem... Well, I want to say they didn't seem worried about it. Earlier, it was a four-level lead. I agree. I think at the time they hit level 12, that, yeah, maybe you're not too worried about Jock. At 140 seconds, and you're killing him before he can get his ult off half the time? Shouldn't be worried about it. Now, this is a different Jockin that has been showing up in these team fights, and those ults have been devastating. Bentomu gets a little bit of poke, but they're not getting a big enough zone here. It's low. Team Copyright are going to be able to walk in. There's going to be a good pickup from Okeanos. Ogie Bogies get the Oni Fury, but can they survive the onslaught afterward? Ice Ice is looking for more. In fact, they're the ones getting aggressive. They're trying to fight this good stun from Ogie Bray. Continues this fight, See but ya. it's Gunter's damage. Three, it's the rest four. of the team that they're just going to keep finding them. It's Jockin alone and alone no more. He gets to go to the grayscale with the rest of the team. Triple kill for Ice Ice, 9, 2, and 4, and the full-on deicide for Team Copyright. Ogie bogies, you picked up the objective, and you fought over nothing. And Team Copyright, well, they've been fighting over nothing the entire set. They love going for these aggressive plays, and we're very comfortable to take that one. 5 for 0, and the Fire Giant for the Gold Fury. I'm sure a trade the Chaos team very happy to take. Bogies, I don't know. Uh, they could have just walked away. I feel like I'm saying this a lot this week, the last couple of weeks, an objective goes down, and the team that gets the objective says, okay, well, we're, we're ahead now, right? Like We got all this gold in our back pocket. It's not like you, you shove the gold into a sack and start hitting people with it. You need to go back to base and turn that gold into an item for it to help you at all. Despite an upward tick for the Ogie Bogies immediately after the Gold Fury, there was no change in the team fight dynamics, and team copyright, well, they knew that. Well, and unfortunately, look, there's a lot of ways to fight back into this Phantomu. I'm going to tell you what you're doing right now is not it. Maybe a pick could have happened there, and it could have been interesting. And Mifflin, I want to harken back. I, I'm noticing this way too late. But okay. They did run a poll to figure out if chat, who, who would have been caught out like Jock in that time under the Tier 1 in mid and who wouldn't have. Uh, 80%. So you were actually way closer than percent off. Me. Unlucky. Uh, but, hey, you were the closest. And, like, no prizes rights rules. You were just the closest out of the two of us. So you win. I appreciate that. You know what? And, uh, you know what? I'm, uh, it takes a big man to say that because I would have never noticed that in my life. I, I, you could have just let that die, and I, and I wouldn't know about it at all. I wanted it. I wanted. You know Chad, who the biggest I wanted your is? voting to feel vindicated, and I wanted Mifflin to know that you were, were close to agreeing with. Him. You know who the biggest winner is, though. The 80% in chat who told the truth. Because that other 20%, they're just lying. Yeah. They're just lying. <laughs> there's, there's there's, so many of those fun questions about, like, are you one of the people who blanks or are you a liar? 
right? And then, like, <laughs> people will fill in the blank with whatever they want. And unfortunately, right now, there's a blank being filled, at least in Okeanos' heart. It's a kill. And it's going to be Christopher Oosh. Robin here at some point. He's this Charybdis can try to run away, but how far are you going to get out of here? Not very is the answer. Streak up does take that one away from his support, puts the third on his own belt. And they've got two minutes of power play. This is very similar to last time around. Two minutes left in the Fire Giant, and nothing crazy has started up just yet. I think they did get a tier two tower on right. So Team Copyright have already started off a little stronger. You know what, Mifflin? They're going to start an onslaught on the left lane. They might as well go for the highest value Phoenix. I would argue that Ogie Bogies have got a much better defensive composition this time around, largely centered around Winnie the Pooh on this Agni and Jockin's ultimate, if that does come back up in time, can start to shift up these team fights as well. Keep your eye on Winnie the Pooh, though. He's got to put out some damage, and he's got to do it soon. Well, there's going to be some decent damage immediately onto Okeanos, and they recognize it. They go for the Agni. And that's going to be a good disengage from Winnie the Pooh, uh -oh. at least for a little uh -oh. bit. Ice Eyes finds the way back. Ice Eyes finds the kill on the Agni, and now the Phoenix is gone. And the team looked like they wanted to go for a little bit more, but the Fountain Healing and the base being a little too strong for Ogie Bogies. It's going to be a back off from Team Copyright, potentially going for mid. They still have a minute and a half to play with. They do, and the Ogi Bogey's going to have to withstand it, and that's not exactly a fight that you're loving having to take. Team Copyright have already done a good job of pushing up that mid wave. A fair deal down the lane, so Tier 2 Tower already at 50% probably won't stand for too much longer, especially without Winnie the Pooh. I do not want to see Ogi Bogies step up to this Tier 2 at all, and they agree. They do not do so. This Phoenix, though, you got to dig in your heels somewhere. Yeah, you got you to gotta make a stand, and you got to make it soon. Okeanos goes for a leap. Azrael into the back line immediately. He's boxing out Christopher Robin pretty easily. Luckily, Charybdis, so you can still get out of there alive. The Phoenix is already gone. And so they came and got what they wanted to. 43 seconds left on the power play here for copyright. <laughs> they, they still want a little more. Unfortunately, the Phoenix maybe seems like a little bit too overzealous for them. They don't want to try and end up failing on that one. Winnie the Pooh has respawned. So instead, Mifflin, they'll just go back, take a Pyromancer, take all of the jungle that has respawned at this point. There's a Scepter that's about to come up. I think they're still feeling pretty good about their chances with the, what, 16,000 gold that's in their pockets? Yeah, 16,000, and I like to equate Fire Giant to 20 or 10,000 on its own, so we'll say 26,000 by the time the next actual team fight rolls around. I say that because I do not think the Ogie Bogies should step up in a neutral territory almost ever again until this game is closed up, right? You want to play with that unofficial six man uh, named your Phoenix and or your Titan. And considering the pacing of the last couple of base defenses we saw from the Ogi Bogies, there was not a single time they were five strong. Somebody got picked. It was Christopher Robin in the duo lane. It was Winnie the Pooh on the left side Phoenix defense by the time Christopher Robin had respawned. So you haven't had your backliners together in a single one of these team fights. If the Ogi Bogies can just slow down group up, stay together, don't get picked, and fight as five, their composition is better at this portion of the game than what we saw in game one. It hasn't come to fruition just yet. Sure, kills a little bit better. It was five and one, now nine and two. But, I don't know. It hasn't really changed the state of the game, has it? Uh, not, not at all. No. But your ability to defend is certainly there so long as you've got all five. And I think as long as the – okay, well, uh, maybe not. They've, they've stepped up to defense. Oh, no. Well, hey, you know what? They're trying, unfortunately. <laughs> Wait, they're living. <laughs> Christopher Robin, he survives. Oh, they're not living. I don't know if I'd say they're living just yet. Winnie the Pooh taken down. Change your name to Eeyore, man, because this is a sad one <laughs> for the way the game has been going. They're going to continue chasing them down. Ogie goes away. There's a pickup oh, no. from the Fenrir. We're looking at it as it falls apart. Triple kill for Ice Ice. He wants a little more. He's chasing him down. Fantomu, he could be number four. As Ice Ice closes the gap, continues No, give it to forward. him. There's the leap away. At this point, I think the timer no. has worn away. Streak up took it anyway. So who cares? No pentakill dream for Ice Ice. But it doesn't matter. Game two and a spot in the SCC here exists for Team Copyright. And for icing on the cake, let's dive the fountain. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to get him, you know. That's the support. He's survivable. Gorp. <laughs> I don't know that I, I'm going to project. I feel like you're the type of dude who's like played some D and D in the past, yes, right? Yes, I've uh, also DM. Uh, speaking directly to all the DMs, we played D and D together. All right, bro. Let me do my thing. Okay. okay? Sorry. Sorry. So sorry. Uh, speaking to all the DMs in the chat, sometimes you you create a lot of lore. You start doing some world building, and then like the murder hobo squad just like rolls through and ignores all of it. Yeah. I was setting the stage for a sick base defense that entire time, evaluating how Agni could keep him out of the Phoenix. 
And they just walk up to the fire giant and die, man. I feel like all that work I did was, was, a, was a little bit of uh, You did everything lost. to describe, hey, you know, you're at a path with a fork. And you, you describe very heavily the right side path and be like, going this left. is the interesting one. And the players go left. And you're like, but <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I guess that's how you feel at the end of that one. Team Copyright, they're happy. They've got their spot in the SCC. We're going to break that one down, look at their numbers, and, of course, look at the schedule and everything for the rest of the day right after this. Team Copyright get their victory here, and they move forward as one of the now two confirmed teams in the European SCC, and they do it in a very convincing fashion. Mifflin, game two. You're convinced? It looks pretty good for, for Oogie Boogies in some regards, but you know, even 11 minutes, there's a 4K gold lead as the fights go on. And just they never never seem to fight back. There were some good good occasions for Oogie Boogies. They just never got full control. 
Yeah, it, it it almost just feels like I mean it, it's their their lack of experience kind of kind of showing itself in this game where even though they were able to find individual plays where mechanics shine through and they turn around these engagements, they weren't able to transition it into solidified wins. They weren't able to get themselves neutral objectives, control the macro farm, realize when it's the right time to disengage, despite having a lot of individual talent on this team. Now there is a gold fury. Uh, I, did, I think we specifically were talking about it. It was a really good, at least, engage at the beginning for Oogie Boogies, and we're going to be able to watch this. They get the objective. They fought after this. They do. I mean, Fantomu sticks around. He gets poked out, picked, and then Ogabri and Jockin are like, let's go, because Christopher Robin just dashed into their back line. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Christopher Robin to be alone in your back line whatsoever. He baits the entire team forward, and... Uh, a good team dies together, I suppose. You know, if, if, if one person's going in, you have to follow the call or it's never life, going to work it. out. But it didn't work out either way. Is that even a reference you get? Have you seen Bad Boys? Um, like the cop like, song? Yeah. Well, like, like the movie that the song was in? The, the, it's from a movie? Yeah, bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. Though, Will, it, okay, Mifflin, so here's going to be a thing. For uh -huh. a long time, if Will Smith was in a movie, Will Smith was, made, a song for that, made a song for that movie. H Hancock. He made a song for Men in Black. He made a song for Pursuit Wild of Wild Happiness. West. He made a song. I'm naming a bunch of Bad movies Boys. he didn't you make are, songs yes, for. Yes, I know. More recently, I said, but for a <laughs> while there in the 90s, obviously before King Richard. You. He's a good actor. Either way, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. I can't even remember what I wanted to say about this game. Look, copyright play really well. Ice Ice had like a nuts KDA at the very end of this one. And you can see it there. 13, 2, and 5. Mifflin, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm making you talk about it. Yeah. Tell me about this. Well, I mean, when your jungler is 13 and 2, yeah. you should probably just win. Counter to what, you know, my, ra together, my rank together, KDAs bad would boys say. For life. Come on. Okay, sorry. Yeah, dude. I, I love – I don't. I, I'm not even going to finish saying that. Um, Will Smith? I was going to say cops, oh. like the show. Um, yeah. That's fine if you don't finish that sentence. You can say you love Will Smith, though. I do. I like Will Smith. I had the CD Big Willie style. Anyway, it's a lot of damage. I, I, and that's a lie. It was my older sisters, but <laughs> I still listen to it. Either way, <laughs> Gunter does 19,800 damage. 17K being put out from Ice Ice. 16.6 there towards the bottom. Fantomu has a lot. I think I saw the 17K there. So, uh, again, a lot of damage. Some good team fight potential. Maybe just some questionable decisions, really, from Oogie Boogies towards the end, and specifically in that Gold Fury that changed things up. And unfortunately for them, they do get knocked down into the lower bracket now. So that is a confirmation for Team Copyright to move forward. Congratulations. And you can see right over there and in between Mano Tiesta as well as Joust O'Clock. Whoever wins that is going to go up against Ogie Bogies. And then whoever wins that will get back into another qualifier round, potentially to make it back into the SEC. So a lot of games still going down in the bottom bracket. But we still have two more teams to confirm today for Europe. And we'll get the other two tomorrow as we'll get the final two for North America on Sunday. Belt Slap, Thunderhead coming up next. Mifflin, Winter Frogs, Late to Scrims. Looking at the rosters for the rest of the day, there's still a, a lot of names that are familiar and very recently seen that are on the board to potentially make it in. Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes on Belt Slap, a, a very dominant roster from last year that has uh, gone largely unchanged, so I'm expecting great things from them. And in the other set, the Winter Frogs, despite having a goofy name or anything but on the battlefield, these guys are ruthless. I think they might have a pretty good shot stepping forward as well. It's going to be fun to see. I, there's a lot of smite still ahead of us. And, of course, a lot of enjoyable games to be seen here in Europe. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more EUSCC.